Well, welcome to the Ignited Mentoring Series. My name is Robert Pears. I want to share insight that is very important and powerful that each of us lay hold of, that we're called to be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. And today I'm going to share insight from Evan Roberts. He was the young man that, of course, birthed the Great Welsh Revival of 1904 through 1905. That revival would birth a series of revivals worldwide, including the Azusa Street Revival in 1906. As I look at this young man, all of a sudden he goes from being a nobody to a somebody. He's seen revival meetings every day, and he's crossing throughout Wales, preaching all kinds of places. He would not eat properly, he would not sleep properly. And as a consequence, he would end up having these physical, emotional, and mental breakdowns that ultimately caused him to go into hiding. And that is not God's desire. So I believe there's a lot we can learn from this man as he started to discover the importance, as is written in Ephesians 6.10, that we are to be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Now, I believe this comes out of dwelling permanently in the secret place. That is your inheritance. That is the place where we need to come and get to know the Lord, be strong in Him, strong in knowing Him. And then, through an exchange, we no longer walk in the power of our might. We do not overcome, but in the power of His. We need to understand in this life how to walk strong in the Lord and the power of His might, how to walk with a strong body, a strong mind, and of course, most importantly, a strong spirit. Now, as I said in Ephesians 6.10, it says, Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of His might. So let's start by praying, Father, in the name of Jesus we come. And I ask you, Holy Spirit, give us eyes to see, ears to hear, and minister to each person. Father, we seek the manna of your presence, to come into your presence and truly know you, that we might be strong in you. Jesus, we cling to you. We pursue you. We want to know your voice today. We want to be so in tune with you today. I thank you, Father God, that you open the word. You give us revelation knowledge that's fresh now from heaven, that touches, changes, and impacts us. Father, we give you the glory, the honor, the power, and the praise in the name of Jesus, and the church said amen. Now we understand because we're living in last days and spiritual warfare has intensified. And it's not just, we sometimes think uh, spiritual, but it's having an impact on us mentally, emotionally, and physically. So we need to know how to be strong in the Lord because in that place of strength from the Lord, we gain wisdom so that we gain this exchange of strength of His might in our beings, but we also gain wisdom of how to be a good steward of our body, give it proper rest and proper food. Evan Roberts wrote, The Apostle urges in Ephesians 6.10 that the believer should be strong in order to be prepared for the conflict. The old man's weaknesses must be put away, for the onslaughts will be terrible from the powers of darkness. Your strength must be equal to the forces against you. And I would even add greater. And the, how can we be greater? by standing strong in the Lord and the power of His might. That means we must come and make a permanent dwelling in the secret place so that we know Him, that we come to a place that we can say we are strong in Him, we truly know Him, and we understand the importance of exchanging because in that secret place, there has to be a laying aside of the old man and his weaknesses. Many of us try to battle, and today we're being faced with an onslaught of attacks. And the enemy wants to so drain you emotionally, physically, and mentally. We need to know how to tap in. We read the Psalms, and we read uh, the Psalms where David would say that he was overwhelmed, but he would come to the rock that was higher than him. In this hour, where these attacks just are overwhelming, you need to know how to come and have such a strength and a relationship in the Lord, and know how to exchange your weaknesses lay them at the cross, and receive His strength, which is, has to be in every area of your life. He went on to say, The evil forces of darkness will make daily and hourly onslaughts on you. Therefore, be strong. But how? Be strong in the Lord. Not a call to be strong in you. And in this hour, there really is a push that we need to be strong in ourselves. But we need to learn how to be strong in the Lord. 
And that, of course, starts in that relationship. Our relationship must always be strong, must always be now, must always be fresh. We need to daily pursue when you wake up, particularly on the days where your body doesn't want to. And there are days where I get up, my body is just is exhausted. It's gone through a lot, particularly in a day of trial or tribulation where you're just being challenged in so many ways. There's the days that your body, your mind, your emotions just want to take it easy. They just want to pull back. They just want to veg and watch some TV. And you have to stir yourself and say, it's critical. It's essential that I get into the secret place of his presence. And I spend time worshiping him, giving him honor. There is power. Jesus said that. Power, strength in the worship of the Lord. In this place of truly knowing him. And here, coming to an end of us, an exchange of our weakness to receive his strength. Evan Roberts went on to say, a tower of strength is he to them that trust him. And we come to a place of trusting him when we know him. When I've spent time long enough with him that I know his will, I know his thoughts, I know his love, his care for me. And it's personal. And so as a consequence, I know I can trust him. I know this care of this worry, this concern, this onslaught that I'm facing. I can cast this care onto the Lord because I know He cares for me. I trust Him. How can I be strong in the Lord? Notice how truth enables a believer to be strong and to stand. Ananias could not stand before Peter because of his lie. Truth becomes strength. And remember that we're given the Holy Spirit of truth. And the Holy Spirit wants to come and bring us to a place where we stand true, where every lie in us has to be exposed. And this is why so many of us refuse to go into the secret place, because we run from it, because we recognize issues in our life that we don't want to deal with. We don't want to admit failures. We like certain things that we shouldn't. If we're going to abide in the secret place, we're going to encounter with the spirit of truth, and he's going to begin to address, convict us, challenges of those areas so that we are walking in truth. So we understand that if we're going to stand strong in the Lord and the power of His might, there has to be a foundation of truth in our lives. Evan Roberts went on to say this, the disciples on the day of Pentecost had more than force. They had understanding. When Christ opened their minds to the interpretation of the scriptures, they had knowledge in the three and a half years in the gospel work, in healing the sick, in casting out demons, in seeing miracles performed, in listening to the things of the kingdom uttered in parable without parable, uttered in illustrative and picturesque language and open truth, the flaming, swaying sword of truth. So you can imagine all of a sudden we discover these disciples who have been mentored, have truly had this great experience of hands one-on-one -on -one training with the Lord now come to the place where the Holy Ghost gives them revelation and understanding. See, many of us can walk in the light of the knowledge of the truth. We look at the Word and we have a great knowledge of the Word. We may read it a lot every day. We may have memorized so much of it. But until we walk in revelation and understanding of it, that Word is not producing the strength that it's supposed to. I so encourage you, that every day you ask the Lord, give me eyes to see, ears to hear. That we enter the Word, praying over it, as you would before you open and eat food. That, Father God, this Word, I wanted to have revelation knowledge. So, I thank you, Father God, give me such eyes to see, ears to hear. Give me revelation of this Word. Holy Spirit, breathe, vent on this Word, and let it have such a knowledge. Reveal Jesus. I want to understand. I want it to be personal. I want it to impact penetrate and change my life because my life needs to be built upon an understanding a truth of your word. Evan Roberts said this, they've been trained to watch, trained to pray, trained to observe, trained to detect the presence of evil spirits in men and to cast them out, trained to heal the sick. Things which they had never comprehended were now on the day of Pentecost rightly interpreted to them by the Holy Ghost. Sin they knew had to be dealt with and Satan too. So all of a sudden they were living by a different order. They're now walking according to the order of the Spirit. They're not just natural people 
And we cannot walk this life as natural people anymore. We are spiritual people. And we understand we need the Holy Spirit to lift us and bring us to the place where we're seated with Christ in heavenly places as spiritual people. With spiritual understanding. So that we're looking at things with spiritual eyes and spiritual ears. So that we're interpreting things based on the revelation the Holy Spirit gives us. Many of us continue to respond, particularly when you're in a trial and tribulation. You've been attacked in emotions, attacked mentally, physically. And we look at it from a natural perspective and we're trying to apply that word naturally. Because applying it based on the rules of the Spirit, we don't always like. Love thy neighbor. Well, sometimes my neighbor makes me so upset, I want vengeance on my neighbor. And learning to walk in forgiveness, learning to walk not legalistically according to the law, but allowing the Holy Spirit to write it on my heart and give me revelation so that I now act and walk and do based on that implanted word, receiving the word and allowing it to be implanted in me and therefore producing, impacting. Let me continue. Note how David became weak before Nathan's charge. Thou art the man. David's previous and just judgment on the unnamed criminal fell back heavily upon himself. Sin is a weakening factor. Then get rid of sin and let it not reign and cast off the works of darkness. Let me just put this in context. Of course, David had sinned with Bathsheba, Bathsheba sorry, and he had first killed her husband, got her impregnated. Um, and so here he's guilty. And the prophet comes and exposes. And David as the Holy Spirit touches him and brings such conviction, realizing that he's the person. And see, we need to walk so soft, so sensitized, so easily convicted. Many of us don't understand where we truly were and of the great mercy that God has shown us. We think it's okay to continue to walk in sin, to play this game where we're half in the world, half in the Lord. And we can't anymore. There has to be a true exposing of us, a true revelation of His great mercy towards us. And that we today need to come, submit to that mercy, and repent, and put right, and allow the Holy Ghost to so change us. I talk about being wrecked, and I believe we need to come to that place where the Holy Spirit so exposes in us all those areas where we're falling short, not to so condemn us. But as He does so, He reveals the intensity and mercy of the love of the Lord, and how God, rich in mercy, desires to deliver us out of this, because the sin weakens us. The sin attacks our identity, attacks our spiritual strength, and it inhibits, blocks, hinders the move of God in our life. And so God wants to address that, deal with that, to bring into place where you can walk in victory. See, we want our cake and to eat it too. We want to be able to enjoy the world and be blessed. And God says, no. And in the secret place, if you're going to abide there permanently, then we stand there naked and exposed before the Lord. All sin has to be dealt with because the secret place, we see the appropriations, we see the response of heaven towards sin. So you cannot stand in there, you cannot come into that place without the addressing of sin. He went on to say, Israel could not stand before the men of A because of sin in the camp. Then be strong, be not weak. Remove all that makes you weak. Remove all that hinders you from being strong. Cain's moral strength was weakened by the acceptance of Abel's offering. The strong became weak through sin. So we must allow the Holy Spirit to take our weaknesses and crucify them. I want every area of my life that is not in alignment with heaven, not in alignment with the law of the Spirit, to be addressed, crucified, killed. Because I want to stand now walking this new life according to the new order, by the Holy Spirit, strong in the Lord, and the power of His might. Let me share this. Ignorance is a source of weakness. Joshua's ignorance of the wild of the Gibeonites led him to lose a victory over a section of the Canaanites. John the Baptist in prison fell into doubt concerning Christ and his own prophecy because he didn't understand the ways of God. He said, Art thou the Christ? He possibly reasoned thus, if thou art the Christ, and thou art undoubtedly doing wonderful things, then why don't you do one more miracle and release me from prison? 
He had an opinion, and many of us walk with an opinion of how God is supposed to do it. We have interpretations as we look at situations. This is how we see that God is supposed to do it. But in the secret place, we must come to such a surrender and bowing that, God, it's thy will be done that I may not comprehend or understand. I'm going to have to trust you at times and allow you to give me revelation. But even if I don't understand, trust your ways, trust your will, and not walk in ignorance, not walk in a place where I'm in violation of your will and purpose because I don't understand. Hold the Spirit in this place so reveal any area of my life that, as I said, is out of alignment, that in some way does weaken me in some way does allow the enemy of access to my life and to bring about defeat. Evan Roberts said, if you desire physical strength, you must pay the price by complying with the laws of strength. And I want you to think about an athlete. An athlete, first of all, has a goal, whether it's to, you know, compete in some event, the Olympics or whatever. And as a consequence, they realize they're going to have to discipline that body to produce the strength and the endurance necessary. Or maybe it's for health reasons. And as a consequence, they're not moved by the price. And see, many of us talk about, well, the gospel is by grace through faith, and it's free, not by works. And so we're reluctant to pay any kind of price. And it is, but we have to understand there is a price of we must pay of choosing daily to pursue him of like in the natural we must build up our spiritual muscles we must be strong in the lord that is not going to come overnight but that's going to take quality decisions of going after the lord it takes a discipline and a resolution that you have to make you cannot be carried you cannot someone get this injection that makes you superly spiritually strong as we pursue him in the secret place as we're willing to lay aside, as we're willing to allow him to expose uh, uh, in us anything of darkness or weakness, just like an athlete, they have to look at their diet and anything that's contrary to the desired results they're looking for has to be removed. But what if they like that? What if that's something they want? It doesn't matter. They have to look at the desired result. And we must desire God more than anything. That your loving kindness is better than life. That that desire to know him so that I'm strong in him becomes so much greater. That the price and the laying aside of certain things. Even things that we enjoy. Even things that are not necessarily bad. Remember, and I'll do another video on this. The little foxes spoil the vine. There are certain things the Lord has told me you cannot do. Uh, There are certain games on the phone that I enjoy playing. And he said they become addictive and they've consumed time. And they have drained the time that you're supposed to spend with me. And he says, I don't want you doing that anymore. Now, I'm not saying that you do the same. you got to do it by the conviction of the Holy Spirit. But it was an innocent thing. But it was stealing that relationship that I have with the Lord. And this discipline, this resolution that we have to make individually, take in our will and say, I submit it. God, I so desire you because I need to be found strong in you. He went on to say, physical strength does not guarantee moral strength. Samson was perfect by the Lord in the sense of physical strength, yet his very abnormal strength was not correspondingly matched by his highest morality. So you cannot understand, we have to get a hold of this, that you can be strong mentally. You can be strong in a knowledge of the word. You can be strong physically. But if I'm not walking strong spiritually, If I'm not walking with a strong relationship with the Lord, if I'm not walking with a strong understanding of the Word, these strengths provide nothing. Every strength also must be submitted to the Lord. See, we want our weaknesses dealt with, but we also want our strengths. Because if your strength is not submitted, humble before the Lord, then it becomes a weakness. I want my strength to be under the anointing and the Lordship of Jesus. So that where I'm strong, thank God, he's even stronger. And where I'm weak, he's strong. Amen? The strength of health is needed for the battle. But above all is needed the strength of the spirit, that the spirit may be in a position to be in power and to dominate both soul and body strength. Now, 
You need a strong body. You need to give it rest. And we need the wisdom from the Lord God in these days to ensure that we take care of this body, that we're a good steward of this body. We provide the correct nutrition, not the wrong. And at the same time, we give it the correct rest that it needs, not over rest and not under rest, because we need to take care of this body. But most importantly, we need to build that relationship in the secret place so that we take care of our spirit being. You have to recognize that you are a spirit being and that that spirit being lives in a body and has a soul. That soul being your mind, will, and emotions. Since the fall, man has been walking under the lordship of the soul, his mind, his emotions. And if you look back at your old life, that soul arena dictated to us. It controlled us based on our hurts, based on our experience, based on our memories, based on our understandings. And so we acted based on our soul arena response. We need to get so strong in the Lord that we become strength, we become strong in the spirit man. And our spirit man can now speak to the soul, speak to your emotions, speak to your understanding, and tell it, this is the will of the Lord. So that there's times where I don't naturally understand, but I trust the Lord because in the spirit realm, I've laid hold of his will, and I'm going to trust him because I'm strong in him. And I know him, and I know that at the right time he will bring me an understanding, and so that I will get it. But even if I don't, I trust the Lord. I don't want to be held captive to my emotions, my past, my memories. But in the presence of the Lord, there's liberty. And I'm grateful that he whom the sun sets free is free indeed. And in a secret place, because I'm in the presence of the Lord, the Holy Spirit is continuously making me free, bringing me to greater liberties, enabling me to be not held captive to PSD, to memories of the past, to the hurts, and etc. We need to come to a place where, you know, we crave Him. That we're not dictated by the cravings and lusts of the flesh man, that soul arena. But rather, the spirit man dominates and it pursues the Lord. That's your first response. It's your first desire. Psalm 63, 1 through 4. O God, you are my God. I seek you earnestly. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh yearns for you in a dry and weary land where there is no water. Thus, I've seen you in the sanctuary to see your power and your glory because your loving kindness and better than life. My lips will praise you because of this relationship, because of this experience that I've had in the secret place, that my spirit, I am more in tune with it. It has greater authority, a greater voice in my life. That's when we're getting strong is when our spirit man has a greater voice. And now the response that we have when we're attacked, the response we have when we're not attacked, because one of the greatest attacks of the enemy is to give you a break. Because when all things are going well, we slack off. We pull back. And that's a time to press forward. That's a time to get even stronger in the Lord. That's a time to go after Him so that you spiritually stand strong and you always respond spiritually. I should say, led by your spirit man. Evan Roberts said this, The Apostle Paul said, When I am weak, then I am strong. Not that he was cultivating weakness. His own weakness was the occasion for the divine assistance. That Paul would boast in his weakness, not because he was glorying in himself, but recognizing, understanding as he stood in the secret place of God's presence, that I am frail human flesh, and that I yield surrender to you, Lord. Because in this place where I cannot do it, and you're going to face trials, tribulations, particularly in this hour, that are too great for you, where you don't have it and you are weak, you are deficient. And we need to recognize that before the Lord in the secret place, and build our strength in Him by surrendering. Not, I shouldn't say your strength, but rather through the exchange and allowing the Holy Ghost to build in us, to impart to us that new life, so that we're walking under and by the Holy Spirit. Let me finish with this. Evan Roberts said, Keep me, Lord, from fainting in this fierce fight. When the foe is rising, clothe me with thy might. Amen? Well, I pray this message has blessed, helped, and minister to you. 
particularly in this hour, maybe you're going through a great trial, trouble, tribulation, or difficulty, and you're being attacked emotionally, physically, emotionally, or, or mentally, and we need to know how to be strong in the Lord and the power of His might. That discipline, that resolution that we have to make to go after the Lord every day and become strong in relationship and knowing Him, strong in allowing Him to open the Word so that we're not just having a head knowledge, brain tissue understanding, but walking in revelation, appreciating and receiving the full ministry of the Holy Spirit today so that we're now under the leadership of the Holy Spirit, led by walking in and by the Holy Spirit. I thank you for watching, and I pray as I said this message has blessed you. Would you, I ask, consider liking, sharing, and subscribing. As you do, you help us uh, through the algorithms at YouTube to reach more people. And we want to touch as many lives as possible and bring them to a deep, intimate relationship with Jesus. We need that in this hour. Would you consider also joining our prayer partnership team? It costs you nothing. You can gain more information down below are going to GodsGeneralsAndRevivals.com and going to our partner page. As you sign up, you commit to praying for this ministry because I believe that the impact, uh, and number one, obtaining the right word, and number two, having that word, having a life to it, touch lives, comes through a foundation of prayer. I also believe that as you commit not just to pray for this ministry, but for the other partners, you open the door that at any moment, any time, all of a sudden God can pull on a partner worldwide to pray for you just when you need it. And finally, and I should say not finally, another thing I should say, you're invited to our Zoom meetings where I share and minister and give messages that I don't always post on YouTube uh, or social media. And finally, I believe that we stand before the Lord and get the reward for what this ministry has accomplished. And we see so many backsliders daily returning to the Lord you share in that harvest. So I want to thank you. Check out more in the series on The Secret Place and other videos, other series, and may they help you live strong and bold for the Lord in this hour. Thank you. We love you. We appreciate you. We're praying for you. Be blessed in the name of Jesus. Amen.